Throw your hands up one more time. Throw those hands up one more time. And declare victory. Declare victory. Now, see, you can say it and not mean it, and your life will stay the same. But I need the folk that believe God today that you will not be living under anymore, but you are going over. I need you to declare victory. Thank you, Lord. Victory. Stuff that had you worried and fearful, you don't have to be worried or fearful anymore. Hallelujah. God's grace is upon your life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody shout victory. 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 Woo. Hallelujah. 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 Victory, God. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. We praise you. Yes, Lord. Victory. We give you praise. Yes, Lord. We give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody just declare it one more time. Matter of fact, look at your neighbor around you and say, We've got victory. We got victory. Yes. Oh, God Almighty. We got victory. I hear that old song. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We have victory. Come on, help me say it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say the Clap your hands one more time. Give it Amen. Somebody just, do you, do you believe victory is here this morning? Oh, yeah. Amen. Down in my spirit, yes. I feel victory. Yes. I don't know about anybody else, but I feel I, victory. God, I praise you. God, I praise you. God, I praise you. God, I praise you. Come on, just worship him. Thank you, Lord. Bring me up a little bit. Hallelujah, yes, God. We praise God. you. Yes, praise you, Lord. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Worthy Jesus. Oh, you worthy, Lord. If you have your Bibles or whatever device your Bible is on, turn with me to Genesis chapter number 50. verses. That's really all I need. I'll provide you the background of the text as we go on, but I just need two verses and we're going to work from there. Genesis chapter 5. 50, excuse me. Genesis chapter 50. Glory to Jesus. Look at verse Number 19. Matter of fact, let's do three verses. Verse 19. And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for am I in the place of God? But as for you, you thought evil against me. <laughs> but God meant it unto good. To bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. Verse 21, now therefore fear ye not. I'll nourish you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spake kindly unto them. Father, bless your people as we receive your word today. I ask that you give me the tongue of the learned. Anoint me afresh to speak, God, the oracles of heaven. I pray that not only these that are gathered here among us would be blessed, God, but those that are under the sound of my voice, those that are walking the park, those that are with their children in the playground, wherever they may be. Father, we pray that this neighborhood would receive your word today in Jesus' name. And we say thank God. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. We do honor today the Lord for our bishop. Can you Amen. celebrate Amen. Bishop Gary E. Wright? Amen. And while you're clapping, don't stop clapping yet. I want you to help me celebrate the woman of God that stands beside him. Amen. Our first lady, first lady Frenchie Wright. Amen. We thank God for her this morning. Hallelujah. I know I'm going to get in trouble by some folk. I'm going to lean on this when I need it. Mm -hmm. But I've got enough strength to stand and preach today. I thank God my stitches are coming out tomorrow. Amen. Now, they told me to take it a little bit easy after the stitches come out, but I still plan to preach today. Amen. Amen. Preach. Thank you, Amen. Mr. Steve. Thank God for all of our ministers and those that are gathered with us. Those of you that have your cell phones, those of you that are on Facebook, social media that are sitting out here, do me a favor. Go to the Kingdom Life page and get the live video and share it to your page. Share it to your page so your friends, your family, who may not be out here with us this morning at the park, will be able to receive the word that you're about to get. I believe today's word is going to be life-changing. I believe somebody needs what God is about to say. Yes. So, and those of you that may already be watching, I'm asking you to go and share Share, share, let people know that we are live right now and we're about to receive the word of the Lord. Mr. Steve, make sure you get that hoop track ready just in case because I feel a little bit like preaching this morning, Amen. Bishop. Amen, preach, right. preach. I feel, I feel that, you know, that trumpet in my voice. Yeah. I feel it. <laughs> and so, ladies and gentlemen, I want to share with you this morning with this thought in mind, would you help me bring emphasis to my message by sharing these words with somebody around you? Say, neighbor, neighbor this, coat this coat doesn't fit me anymore. Doesn't fit me anymore. Yeah. This coat does not fit me anymore. anymore. <laughs> and then I want to share with you from a subtopic, if you will, Allow me to share from this subtopic. Say this with me. It was a blessing in disguise. It was a blessing in disguise. 
disguise. It was a blessing in disguise. Last week, ladies and gentlemen, Prophet Shaw came and she shared the word of God with us and she ministered about the healing power of God. Yes. Hallelujah. She shared with us about the healing power of God. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I, I sat there and I said, Lord, I got to come here and preach after all that. <laughs> Everybody was so excited and blessed by it. And I'm so glad that you were blessed by the word of God that was shared last week. And I prayed and I said, God, what is it that I should say to the people of God today? What would you have me speak into the lives of your people? And the thing that resonated in me was he wanted me to talk a little bit further about the story of Joseph. Hallelujah. And so, ladies and gentlemen, now, when we look at, when I speak of this word coats, I said, this coat doesn't fit me anymore. If you know about the history of Joseph, you know the story that was shared last week about how Joseph had God's favor upon his life. There was no rhyme or no reason as to why God chose to favor Joseph among all of his brethren. I believe God just knew that there was something that he had placed down on the inside of Joseph that was unique and particular. And so you ought to look at yourself and touch yourself right now and say that there there's something that God has placed on the inside of me that is unique and particular. And so now when Joseph was a young man, probably around 17 years old or even earlier, his father had a coat of many colors made for him as a sign that his father showed favor to him. Now Joseph never asked for this coat. He never asked to be the favorite son of his father. He was just the favorite son of his father. He didn't ask for it. Have any of you ever been been in a situation where you didn't, there's some stuff that came in your life, because watch this, when he got the coat, it made his brothers dislike him. It made some people get jealous of the favor that was on his life. Have you ever been in a position where you had to say, God, there's some stuff that has come upon my life that I did not ask for? You know, I, I, listen, when I look back at my history, First Lady, look at the stuff that I've been through, I, I, we talked about it this week, how I've cried tears over the stuff that I have been through, over the stuff that got on my life, and I said, God, what are you going to do with my life with all of this on it? And I was despised because of what was in my life. I was hated, not just because of the good stuff, but there was some stuff that came down on me that I didn't ask for. Yes, yes. Amen. Can I preach today? Preach it. While I was in my place of struggle, there were people that didn't want me to get up because they saw something greater in my life. God have mercy here. Don't do that yet. When I was in my place of struggle, they talked about me. God, they dug me out. They laughed at me. They put my name on the streets. Yes. Why? Because I was in my struggle. But the thing was, they didn't want me to get up. Because yes. right. if they really preach wanted up. me to get up from where I was, they would have said, they would have took on the word that says you which are spiritual, restore such a one. But they didn't make the effort to restore me. Rather, they tried to kill me. Leave me alone, Mr. Steve. Don't do that. I'm not ready yet. They tried to kill me. Have you ever been there? Maybe they didn't physically try to kill you, but somehow in the way they handled you, they tried to tear you down, tried to make you feel, I don't know who I'm talking to, tried to make you feel like that you weren't a good mother or a good father. I can't hear nobody talking. Tried to make you feel like that you were less than because you didn't have everything that the rest of the family had. Maybe they were driving Lexuses and you were driving a hoopty. I can't hear nobody. And so they talk about you and look at you and you said, God, what in the world are you doing in my life? Yes. And yet, God Almighty, and yet while they were seemingly prospering, uh -huh. doing all the stuff, somehow you were still able to live with what little bit you had. Yeah. I can't get a talk back, sir. Yeah. Didn't have a whole lot, but I was able to live with what little bit I had. I need a church that can praise God for giving you the little bit and causing you to make it with the little bit that you had. Yeah. So, his daddy 
gave him a coat, many colors, and the coat of many colors caused him, even though it represented favor, it caused him angst and trouble because people, didn't, his brothers didn't like him. Then, 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 then the Bible said that Joseph, Joseph was, he, he, one day they were out there and the boys were doing some stuff they had no business doing. Yeah. And while they were doing some stuff they had no business doing, ladies and gentlemen, Joseph went back and told on. That's right. Yeah. Listen, sometimes, sometimes, sometimes you have to learn how to keep your mouth shut. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Whoa, God. See, See, one thing that the church has a big problem with is running our mouth. That's right. A big problem. <laughs> Telling everything we know. Just because you know something about somebody doesn't mean you run back and tell what you know about somebody. Amen. Some of the reason why Amen. they don't like you is because you run your mouth too much. That's right. Amen. Yes. You got to learn how to be silent. Yes. Sometimes you got to learn how to just hush because not because running your mouth too much can get you into trouble. And so now here he is. He's got a coat of many colors and he's got a problem with his mouth. Yeah. Right. Hey. But see, ladies and gentlemen, I believe that part of the reason why he did that wasn't just because he had favor. Well, it was because part of the reason was he knew his brothers didn't like him. That's right. Sometimes you can know that people don't like you and you can do little subtle petty right. things yeah. to get back at them That's to right. prove to them the position yeah. that you are in. That's right. Am I talking out here today? Right. I don't 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 try and act deep and spiritual now. We can do a whole lot of stuff to try to make people see. Look, I I don't care what you think you are over me. I got some power over you. Oh, you don't want, okay, let me, let me talk about y'all church folk real quick. What y'all will do is say, oh, she don't want to talk, listen, she don't want to say too much about me, cause she knows I know some stuff about Oh, God, I can't hear you talking. He better leave me alone because I know too much about him. He'll mess around and bother me, and I'll tell the real story. Yes. See, I don't understand. I got to move, but I, I don't know why I'm in this, but I'm going to mess with it real quick, Bishop. Yes. The bad story. Yeah, the back story. Uh-huh. I'm going to leave it alone, but stuff, it amazes me how stuff you promised to take to the grave. Now, when you get mad with somebody, you ain't taking it to the grave anymore. That's right. I must know him, Bishop. I must know him. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I want to talk about these coats that I said these this coat doesn't fit me anymore. Ladies and gentlemen, coats are a metaphor for the situations and the things that we experience in our lives. A, with every season change in your life, there is a change of coat. Let me just shift. Let me just shift for just a moment. I was thinking about these coats and I thought about Hannah. Mm. Hannah had a son by the name of Samuel. Now, if you remember the story, Hannah could not have a child, Minister Steve. And she prayed and she prayed. And she was provoked by Penina almost daily. And the Bible said that Hannah would cry until she couldn't cry anymore. She got to the point where she had cried so much that when she went to church and was laying on the altar, if you will, she was crying out to God, but no tears were coming out. She was crying out to God, but no words were coming out. Have you ever been in a place where you've been so troubled in your spirit, where you cried till you cried all of your tears out? You have nothing left to cry out. All you can do is just sit there with your mouth open and just go... You don't even have the words to say concerning where you are at that moment. Somebody comes to try and ask you what's going on. You can't even tell them what's going on with you because you've been in a place. And so the Bible declares, God help me preach out here. And so the Bible declares that Hannah got blessed because when she got to that place, you didn't. Can I talk right here? You didn't know that your penina was provoking you to a new level in your prayer life. God, the thing that kept pressing you, the thing that kept 
trying you, what's provoking you to another place of prayer that you've never been before. There's a dimension of prayer that you've never walked in before, that you walk in now, that you, listen, you could never imagine yourself having been here, but because of your penina. Yeah. Ugh, I'm trying the best I can. And so, the Bible said, finally, finally, it was pronounced by the, by the old priest who didn't have much by way of discerning. The priest said, go ahead, you got the petition that you asked of God. And the Bible declares that when he said this, she went home and her and Elkanah ended up getting together. Next thing you know, she was pregnant with Samuel. But one of the things that she had said to God is that if you give me a baby, I'll give him back to you. You got to be careful what you say to God because God's going to hold you to it. Yeah, so she ends up having this baby. She has him up until he's around eight years old. And then she has to take him to the temple and surrender him to God. And when she surrenders, can you imagine? Now, 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 it's one thing to have to have a conversation with Elkanah about what you promised. Yeah. Preach long, preach long, yeah. preach long. Mm -hmm. But can you imagine? Y'all remember the stuff that Prophet Shaw talked about last week? But can you imagine what it would be like to be an eight-year-old child and you have to have a conversation with your eight-year-old child about why he can't stay in a loving home, why he can't stay in this environment where you have nursed him for eight years? Oh, Oh God, y'all better help me right here. All of his brothers and his sisters are in the house. They're living comfortably, and you gotta take him to the to the temple. Yeah, yeah. Oh God, you gotta take him to church, and he's gotta serve in the church while the rest of them doing whatever they want to do. Can you imagine what goes through the mind and the heart of an eight-year-old child when he's being told now that I've got to take you to the temple? But not only is he being taken to the temple to be with the, the priest, but the real problem is he's in a church that is jacked up. Yes. yes. It'd be different if you taken me to a good church. Yeah. Good church. <laughs> Where the pastor is loving. Yeah. That's right. Like they are here. That's right. Uh, it'd be different if you take us to a good church. Yeah, good church. But now, not only do you have the pastor who can't hear God, uh -huh. who's dull of hearing, uh -huh. but now you got his sons who are priests, who are taking the money out the offering plate, mm -hmm. Jesus. and they're sleeping with the women of the church. And this is the environment you got to take this eight-year-old boy to. Lord, I feel it right here. And can you imagine what goes through his mind as he's having to deal with? Can you imagine perhaps he felt abandoned? Maybe he felt rejected. And yet, here was a man who was going to wind up being one of the greatest prophets, Bishop, that Israel had ever known. But I come to tell you, wait a minute, let me work my way through this. What really got me was this. The Bible says that every year, Hannah would go up to the temple and take Samuel a new coat. Every year she would go and she'd take Samuel a new coat because the coat from the last season didn't fit. She recognized that Samuel was growing. She recognized that he was getting stronger. He was getting bigger. That something was happening in his life. So she had to keep bringing him a new coat. I need to tell somebody this morning that you need to be grateful to God for allowing you to experience a new coat. Yes, yes. A new coat. Amen. You didn't know what your coat was leading up to, but your coat was leading to something great. You didn't know what your tears were leading up to, but your coat was leading to something great. You didn't know what your pain was leading up to, but your coat was leading you to something great. You ought to be grateful this morning and tell God thank you for giving me a new coat. Yes, thank you. Uh, watch this. Let me dig a little deeper. Hannah made the decision, but 
Samuel dealt with the consequences. Mm. This is for those of y'all who weren't raised by your mama and your daddy. Maybe you were raised in a single parent home. I wish I had a church to help me preach. Maybe you were raised by your grandma and your grandpa rather than your home where you're supposed to be. Maybe somebody else had to take you in. Maybe you were adopted. Maybe you were a foster child. Oh, somebody else's decision made you have to deal with the consequences. Uh, now, you know what really got me, y'all? I had to question something. How did Hannah go every year and bring Samuel a new coat and didn't even know his measurements? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't know his size. You don't know his size. That's right. Can I preach right there? Yeah. There's a whole lot. Oh, I feel it right there, Daniel. Ah, oh, there's a whole lot of people who are trying to bring you coats and they don't even know your size. I hope y'all are catching the metaphor. There's some people who are trying to bring some stuff to you, but they don't know how big you really are. Could you imagine somebody trying to bring you a coat in a small and you have grown to be a medium? All because they think that's where you should be. Baby, what you don't understand is I've been eating good. Hey, what you don't understand is I've been feeding well and I've been exercising. And so when you thought I should have been a small, God has graced me to be a medium. God has graced me to be a large. I'm not who I, who you thought I should be. Mr. Steve, I cannot preach to you this morning and tell you there's some folk that are trying to bring the old coat back to you. Bring a smaller coat than where you are. Don't you take the coat that does not fit you. Amen. Amen. God, I gotta hurry. Faith is tested. Uh -huh. Our faith is tested by the circumstances of our life. But what you gotta remember is that God is working in the process. I'm about to round third base, y'all, and we're going to ride on home. But now let me go back to Joseph. Y'all thought I forgot about Joseph. But Joseph had, listen, he didn't just go through one coat. That's right. Hey, Jesus, he first got the favor coat. Yeah. But the favor coat led him to the slave coat. That's he was sold out by his brothers. You don't know what it means to advance and to grow until somebody sells you out. You don't know real pain until somebody, and wait a minute, can I go a little deeper? It, it's one thing, it hurts if it's somebody around you. But when it's your family, yes. Could have handled it if it had been somebody else, but it was in my own house. Yeah, it was you. Hey. Your family. Yeah. The one that's got you jacked up right now. God have mercy. There's nothing like the pain that you experience in your seasons that may come from your family. Yeah. I'm going to make some folk mad right now, but I don't care. I, listen, I've had to struggle in relationship with my own mother. And it has been tough sometimes. And I said, God, I don't know what I am doing here. Why is it like this? It shouldn't be like this, but it is like this. Why, God, why? <sighs> you the bishop in the Lord's church and you still have, yes, I still have to fight my way through and listen, it's troublesome because some of the pain that I'm experiencing it should not come from there but it's coming from right there and I say, God, why am I hurting like this? But God said it's because I'm giving you a new coat I'm giving you a new coat and so you can't walk around and I remember I'm going to free myself today. I went to therapy first lady and the counselor was telling me, she said, listen, you know your mother is the way she is. So why are you letting that get to you anymore? you got to get to a place where you know who they are, let them be who they are, and you just keep it moving. I'm preaching to somebody right now, sitting right out here under my voice. You know who they are. It might be your brother, your sister, your auntie, your uncle. You know who they are. Stop tripping over the crazy stuff that they do and let them just be them. You walk in love. You walk in peace. And you keep it moving because it's the enemy's trying to put an old coat on your new season. 
season. Somebody declare, in devil, you can't put an old coat on my new season. You can't put an old coat on my new season. Mm, God, I got to hurry. Wait a minute. Can I just borrow? Can I just borrow one more Bible story, real quick? I'm looking at that man by the name of David. David had he had a shepherd's coat, but the shepherd's coat represented him being an outcast. Y'all heard Prophet Shaw last week when she talked about how he was rejected by his daddy when when the prophet called when Samuel called and said, "Hey, we need you to go get your sons because God has anointed the next king." He gets seven of them when Jesse has eight. Leaves David out in the field taking care of the sheep. Can you imagine what that feels like? You walk in and you're going, what's going on? Uh Why is the prophet here? But here's what you got to understand. While David was out in the field, ah, can I give you a good shout right here? While he was out in the field, what they didn't know, see, they thought he was a little weird. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ah, they called him weird. They called him strange. But what they didn't understand was there was a relationship developing between him and God while he was out there on the backside of the field. Oh, God, I need a church right there. David learned how to worship on the backside of a field. David learned how to praise God on the backside of the field. You want to know where I learned how to worship? It wasn't when I had a microphone in my hand. I learned how to worship while all the other boys were out there playing basketball and football. And I was sitting at my piano that my daddy had bought me. And I was tinkering around. And I was giving God glory. Saying, thank you, Lord. Yes, yes, yes. That's where I got my worship from. Everybody else was doing other stuff. It was me, but I could not because the hand of the Lord was upon me. God was putting a coat on my life. It might have been the coat of the outcast then, but baby, God was doing the work in my life. I'm trying to talk to somebody. Your worship is coming from the things you have been through. Yeah, that's right. And so, watch this. He was, it was a shepherd's coat. Uh-huh. But he was, and he was an outcast. Watch this, y'all ready? With every coat comes labels. Yes, that's right. Labels. <laughs> I'm looking at Bishop Wright's coat right now. On the outside of his coat that he has on, there's a label. There's a label. If you look in the tag, of your coat if you got one yeah, there's a label that's right. with every coat there comes a label that's right yeah now watch this some women wear St. John's suits that's right uh-huh. now those who are accustomed to St. John don't trip over St. John that's right they acknowledge the quality of yeah. St. John that's right. Right. there's a label that's that comes right. with the coat that's right. Yeah. But to some people who may not have had a St. John's That's before, right. uh-huh. they look at the person who has a St. John's uh-huh. coat yeah. and they judge them and say, oh, she thinks she's all that. She's arrogant and she's stuck up. I told you with every coat comes a label. You got to be comfortable. Well, what you with the coat you put on? That's right. Yeah. Because with the coat comes the label. Mm -hmm. But you got to be comfortable that even though you got the label on there, the label doesn't make you one way or the other. That's right. Yes. Preach. See, I like to see a woman who can put on a St. John suit and wear it and wear it nicely, but she doesn't act like she got on a St. John. That's Uh right. That's right. Preaching all right. I like to see a woman who can who can wear one but doesn't act like I'm all of that because I got a St. John on. That's right. See, you can see I'm gonna help somebody right here. You got to learn to wear your coats loosely. Mm-hmm. Yes. I'm about to preach this thing on home now. You gotta learn. Look at somebody and tell them you gotta learn how to wear your coats loosely. You gotta learn how to wear your coats loosely. Why do you have to wear your coats loosely? Because here it is. Seasons change. If I didn't say anything else today to anybody, you ought to just go ahead and give God a praise that seasons change. It does not matter what season you're in right now. Just know that seasons change. It might be warm in your life right now, but seasons change. It might be cold in your life right now, but seasons change. 
change. Hey, God, dep- oh, oh, preach long. Depending on where you live, yeah. some seasons that are supposed to be three months long aren't three months long. Yeah, sometimes they're longer. I can't hear nobody talking. Yeah. Sometimes seasons are longer than what you expect them to be, yeah. depending on where you are in yeah. your life, yeah. where you've been positioned and where you've been postured. Uh-huh. You may think it's supposed to last this long, uh-huh. and all of a sudden it's not lasting three months like you expect. It's lasting longer. Yeah. Oh, but you got to just know that yeah. sooner or later, uh-huh. I-, I feel a howler coming on. I'm trying to stop. Uh-huh. Uh, but sooner or later, there is a season change coming. Do I have a church out here that can give God praise yes. that the season is changing? Yes, yes. And so, and so as I close this, y'all, uh, the Bible, let me go back to Joseph so I can close this. The Bible said that Joseph got the coat of many colors, then he got sold into slavery. And then after he got sold into slavery, he got sold again into Potiphar's house. That's right. When he got in the pot of his house, God raised him up again. Here's the thing. You cannot escape what God has put on your life. Lord, I need a church to help me preach here. Even through all the pain and all the hurt that you're going through, you cannot escape the place that God is taking you and the coats he's putting on your life. I'm almost there. So, he goes... From the servant's coat in Potiphar's house, he gets lied on. That's right. Because when you are getting raised up, uh-huh. it always attracts unwanted attention. Yes. And here comes Potiphar's wife trying him. Yeah, she wanted him. Yes. But Joseph maintained his integrity. Yes. I don't know who I'm preaching to this yes. morning. But in the middle of your, in your, of your circumstance, yes. and while you're wearing the servant's coat uh-huh. and any other coat, maintain your integrity. Your integrity. Yeah, Maintain, Lord, have mercy. Yeah. Maintain your integrity. Sometimes you're going to have to fight for your integrity. Yeah. Not fight people, but fight, uh oh, preach long. You have to fight yourself. Yes, yes. Jesus. I said, you don't have to fight yourself to maintain your integrity. Because you're going to want to cuss them out, money. Yeah. <laughs> Hello? Oh, I got a bunch of deep save folk, Bishop. They don't want to tell the truth. <laughs> you gonna want to fight? You gonna want to pull your gun out, your knife out, your blade? Listen, you gotta fight to man. You gotta fight with yourself yes, yes. to maintain your integrity. When you get lied on, maintain. you gotta maintain your integrity. Yes. When you get talked about, you gotta maintain your integrity. Yes. When she comes flipping her little fast tail around, you gotta make. Hey God, when he comes and he's he's standing there with six foot four muscles everywhere and got his hair parted just right, smelling good, you better maintain. Maintain your integrity. Tell her, tell her. (laughs) Maintain your integrity. Joseph maintained his integrity because he he said, I'd rather leave this coat than to put myself in a position that I lose what I have with God. And so now the Bible said that he leaves this house because he gets put in prison. And when Potiphar gets him thrown in prison, now he's wearing a prisoner's coat. Ah, but what he did not know was that through all of this, can I preach now, y'all? Y'all gonna help me preach this thing out, huh? But what he did not know was through all of this, yes, he was being promoted through every tear he cried. He was being promoted through every pain he felt. Help me here. He was being promoted. I'm trying to tell you today that you are being Promoted. Yes, you ought to give God praise because you are being promoted. You are being promoted. I said, tell somebody. Listen, tell somebody. You're being promoted. Ah, you are being promoted. Y'all, excuse me, but I feel like preaching. Preach it. Preach it. You're being promoted. What he did not know was that through all of this, when he got put in prison, he was being promoted 
Lord have mercy. Because when he started out, he was a dreamer. When he started out, he saw dreams. But by the time, ooh, by the time, well, I wish I could preach a little better, like I feel it. But Lord have mercy. By the time he got to the prison, good God Almighty, he was being elevated and he didn't even know it. His gifting got stronger. Because of what he went through, you got to learn how to say, this coat doesn't fit me anymore. Things I cried over that I used to cry over. was raising me up. You ought to declare God is raising me up. I don't even know all of what God's doing, but I trust Him. Can you just holler out, I trust you, God?
thing you know is how to use his shoulder to interpret a tree that the Pharaoh had. By the time he got done interpreting, he was made second in command. You have no idea what God has in store for you. Was that this man, when he became second in command, his brothers had to come back to get some help. And when his brothers had to come get some help, he had the opportunity to get revenge. He had the opportunity to get back in them. Oh, oh, oh. Ooh, you're going to have the opportunity to show those folks who you really are. Yeah. But God said, let me go back to the text and close. Joseph said, am I in the place of God? Yeah. He said, I'm not God. I can't judge you for what you did. Because yeah. what you did was based on where you were. Yeah. Yeah. But I know Yeah. 
for somebody to call a complaint. Let me fix you in here, boy. Somebody say the code of complaining does not fit me. The code of weakness does not fit me anymore. Now I need y'all to do me one thing. If you're declaring today the code ain't fitting you anymore, if you're declaring today that your life is going to another level, if you're declaring today that you see the blessing in the sky, I need you to hold on. Yes, God. 
Thank yes. you, Jesus. I'm going to quit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Y'all ought y'all to know better than let me stay out of the pulpit for two weeks. Because <laughs> I feel like preaching. <laughs> Still got some more left, but I'm going to let you go. <laughs> but I'm going down the aisle with my hands already up. Yes, amen. <laughs> hey, God. You ought to walk around. Like, oh, yeah, no, coach, you ought to go around your house with your hands up. Yeah. Yeah. You don't know what might be around the corner. You don't know what you're going to face in the ring next. Yes. Well, go ahead and come down the aisle with your hands up. <laughs> yes. Watch this. This entire two weeks that I've been down, I haven't been working. Haven't had a paycheck coming into my house. But watch this. I didn't get worried. That's right. That's right. Hey, Amen. <laughs> you know why I didn't get worried? Because I'm in a different weight class. Yes. 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 I knew what to do. Yes. Just throw my hands up. Yes. yes. That's right. Put your weight on it. <laughs> I knew what to do. Yes. Put my weight on it. Put weight on it. Because <laughs> one thing I know, God will never let a giver, a giver down. down. That's yes. right. That's right. Lord have mercy. He's not going to let you go on. That's right. Am I prophesying to anybody right now? Yes. God is not about to let you go under because his name is on you. Yes. Thank you, Lord. See, it's a blessing in disguise because you can testify about what it means to not have and God shows up and provides. That's right. He's a way maker. Yes, he is. I'm done. Thank you, Jesus. I'm done. I make no apologies for preaching like that today. I felt that this morning. Hallelujah. This coat. Not Don't fit me, me anymore. anymore. No, all the stuff that Prophet Shaw talked about last week, the meditative and all that stuff that, that we go through and cause us to get in, in trouble with our lives, mm -hmm. that coat mm -hmm. doesn't fit me. Anymore. Let me say something to you. If you need counseling, get counseling. That's right. In the church, we try to act like professional care is not good. Hmm. But there's a place where professional care and the Spirit of God can meet together. That's right. That's right. Uh -huh. That's right. If you need counseling, you go to counseling. Right. And while you're in counseling, come holler at your pastor. I'll help pray you through. Amen. Amen. Because there's some things that we have to navigate through in our life that hurt us. Yeah. That are causing actions to come out of us yeah. that we don't really want to be and do. That's right. Oh God, I'm, I'm trying to quit, but I see some stuff in the Holy Ghost. Mm. Go for it. You know, there's a big difference. Mm. I'm going to get in trouble, but I don't care. You know, people in the church world talk about folk who are struggling in some stuff. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But let me just say, there's a difference between struggling and wallowing. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. Mm, Jesus. Struggling means you don't want it. And you're fighting against your flesh to maintain your integrity. Mm -hmm. While wallowing means I want it and I'm going to do what I want to do. There's a difference. But the problem is this. The church tends to judge people and say that they're wallowing when some are really struggling. You don't know what they're going through with God. You don't know their process with God. Do you not know? Watch this. Can I help you right here? Do you not know that sometimes the coat that you put on is applying just enough pressure to press some of that stuff up out of you? So let them talk. Amen. But make sure your struggle is a genuine struggle Thank and not a wallow. Amen. And some of y'all automatically went to sex. I'm not just talking about sex. That's right. That's right. I mean, it ranges from everything to overeating to uh, binge shopping. Yes. yes. Oh, y'all know what you call it. Retail therapy. Th mm -hmm. therapy. Retail therapy. Retail therapy. <laughs> Watch this. 
Some people aren't even having sex, but they're involving themselves in illicit connections, not even sexual connections, just connections because they feel lonely. I don't know who I'm talking to, but that code doesn't no. fit you anymore. anymore. You don't need them. That's right. right. Man. You don't need them to complete you. That's right. That's right. You don't need them to make you whole. That's right. God Almighty. Because that code doesn't fit you anymore. Yeah. Man. Have y'all ever tried to put on something that doesn't fit you? Yeah. Yes. This weed's in too tight. Yeah. <laughs> Watch this. I'm here to bless you. Have you ever put on a pair of jeans or something that was too tight? Mm -hmm. You squeezed your way into them. But well, watch this. Did you notice it was harder to get out of them than it was to get in them? My, my, my. Sometimes, wives, you had to call your husband. Yeah, uh -huh. pull, pull it. Baby, come pull this. <laughs> Watch. Here it is. I, and I just really just said something prophetically. I hope y'all heard it. Because sometimes we get ourselves into stuff that doesn't fit us anymore, and we need somebody to help us pull it off. Yeah. Yes. Preach. That's, That's right. right. Make sure, watch this. If it's a pair of jeans, Sister Monty, you can't call most any other brother to come and help you get out those jeans. That's right. Or right. yeah. oh, it's going to be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> the only person you can call on to help you out of those jeans when it comes to a man is the one right there. Your husband. Watch. The point is someone you are in covenant with and you trust. Yeah, that's right. You know the reason why some of us have been embarrassed? Lord, I'm preaching real good. The reason why some of us have been embarrassed is because we've pulled, we've called in people to help us get out of stuff that were not in covenant with us. So rather than helping us out of it, they exposed us. Yeah. 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 They came in with their cell phone. Mm. Mm -hmm. They went live on social media. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Jesus. Exposing your bloomers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Calling up. <laughs> Big girl pants. Big girl pants. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it together, Bishop. Bring it together. <laughs> I want y'all to know that that was the first lady who said that. <laughs> but here it is. You can't bring people into your struggle as you are coming out of what doesn't fit you anymore. That's right. That are not in covenant with you. God is assigning. Listen to me. The Lord says you need to embrace the people he's bringing into your yeah. life now. That's right. Not the ones you brought in, the ones yeah. he brought in. Yeah. Because mm. they're helping you pull off coats. Daniel and Alicia, since you've been here in Knoxville, yes. God put you in covenant with a church yes. that's been helping y'all pull off some coats. Yes. Look, look at God. Amen. See, that's what you need. People who will help you pull off your coat and won't expose you, mm -hmm. but who have your back. Watch this. Can I go even, can I go even once, one more? Sister Khan, you don't just need people who will help you pull off your coat. You need people who will help you get into the coat that fits you. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Amen. You know one of the things I appreciate about Bishop Wright and Lady Wright? They are always pushing people, yeah. telling them you're not what you've been through. That's right. Amen. You're not the coat you have on now. Yes. You might be in the slave coat. You might be in the servant's coat. You might even be in the prison coat right now. But I still see more. Yes. Yes. Do me a favor. I'm done. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hold this long, but do me a favor. Look around you and encourage your neighbor and tell them, say, I see more for you. 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 And I hear the Lord say, make a covenant with that neighbor that you're going to pray with them this week. Pray for them this week. 
If you really do see yes. more, yes. Yes. pray them into their more. Yes. Amen. Amen. Feel that. Amen. Don't just talk it. Yes. Pray them into it. Prophesy over their life the good things of God. We stood in my house this week. First lady was at my house. And we began to prophesy the things of God into her life. Because even though she's a seasoned saint, God ain't done. That's right. That's right. Amen. Everything that was a part of her history had purpose. We're looking at a plan right now. To cause her to walk into prosperity. Yes, yes. I ain't going to talk about it because ain't nobody's business right now. Mm -hmm. But my point is, she had people who were able to prophesy because we see bigger. Yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes. I'm done. We're getting ready to go. To those of you who are watching my social media, thank you for tuning in. We bless you. We pray that if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you would ask him into your life. Ask him to be your Lord. Ask him to be your Savior. He died on Calvary that you might live. His blood was shed so you don't have to go to hell. Hell is eternal. But guess what? Heaven is too. And you can have it. God bless you. We love you. If you want to sow in the Kingdom Life Church, it's cash out, dollar sign, K-L-C-K. Cash out, dollar sign, K-L-C-K. We pray that God bless you and keep you. Amen. Amen.